Our past often brings us a sense of pride. And yet so often, I think so many memories tend to hold us back. I was five years old when I first started writing calligraphy. And year after year, during Chinese New Year, I would be made to compete in the National Chinese Calligraphy Competition. But as time passed, it became nothing more than this race to perfection and a means of escape from the painful parts of my childhood. Finally one year, I won the National Calligraphy Championships. But it felt so meaningless. And that's when I decided, I'm done writing. But one day I felt God say to me, pick up your brush again, forget the old things, the former things, see I'm doing a new thing. So when I heard that, I began to open up my heart. I began to take that risk in vulnerability. And soon enough, I found myself writing, this time bold and unrestrained by perfection or expectation. Finally, for once, I could be me. Calligraphy became more than just ink on paper. It evolved into this beautiful union of heart, mind, spirit, brush, and joined to his. And for me, it just became this beautiful expression of worship to God himself. With its bold brushstrokes, dynamic spontaneity, and sometimes explosive imprints, the Dreams Collection presents Chinese characters that you typically see during Chinese New Year, but written in both traditional and modern styles in a way that celebrates intergenerational healing and unity. Through his redemption, renewal, and restoration, God has allowed me to forge something new. And my hope for every single person is that if you're struggling with your broken past, you might find hope and inspiration and see your buried dreams come alive in Him again. What an honour to be here this morning. I'm so happy to be here. Today is the last day of Chinese New Year. And you know what really excites me is that always at the beginning or the end of any new season, I believe God is in the midst of doing something new. There's always something exciting about being on the cusp of something, isn't it? Isn't it? Yeah, and so today, even as we celebrate the last day of the Lunar New Year, I really want to pray that today, Father God, we just pray that your Holy Spirit will come and be with us in our midst. And even today, as we share about renewal and redemption and restoration and causing our dreams to come alive in you again, God, I pray that you will leave each of us with a deposition of faith to move forward in the new road ahead. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen, amen. I'm so excited to be here. Just two days ago, I was actually immobilized in bed. I couldn't move. I had actually strained a rib muscle. And then because it got so bad, I went to see a physio. And then she told me I, I strained not only my rib muscle, but basically all the muscles of my upper back. And I could not walk. I had to walk like this. And I told myself, God, you have to make a way for me to come up here. And I told myself, as long as my mouth can still speak, I will make it here. And God has healed me today. I have full range of movement on my left side. So thank you so much. Thank you, Lord. Now today, the topic that I want to speak about is called Walking the Red Sea Road. And this is a topic that's very dear to my heart because so often I really believe that what holds us back is not so much what God has spoken to us and the magnitude of it, but rather the fear that comes in our hearts when we think to ourselves, God, what have you called me to? Now today, before I begin, I want to ask you all this sincere question and tell me honestly, are you ready to read scripture today? Are you ready? Oh, come on, we can do better than that. Are you ready to read scripture today? Yes, all right, yeah, we're fired up for the word. Let's go. Exodus 13. Now let's look at what Pharaoh told the people. Now some of us are familiar with this story. Now those of us who are unfamiliar, you remember that God told Moses to approach Pharaoh and say, let his people go, right? The Pharaoh was enslaving the Israelites in Egypt. 
And then only after the 10 plagues, again and again and again, Pharaoh finally said, okay, go. Now, when Pharaoh let the people go, God did not lead them on the road through the Philistine country, though that was shorter. For God said, if they face war, they might change their minds and return to Egypt. So God led the people around by the desert road towards the Red Sea, and the Israelites went out of Egypt ready for battle. Now, this really, really intrigues me. Why did, not, why did God not lead them through the direct road? Look, if I have a dream, if I have a a mission to accomplish, I want to get there from A to B, shortest way possible. God, why did you take them round the long desert road? And there are some of you here today who are asking God, the new year has passed, Chinese New Year is almost gone, and Lord, I'm still lost, I feel confused. You are taking me round the long road, I feel like I'm a part of a detour. Where are you, God? And I want to encourage you today that this It's intentional. This is part of God's plan. You are not forsaken. Amen? Amen. All right. So let's press on. When the king of Egypt was told that the people had fled, Pharaoh and his officials changed their minds about them and said, what have we done? We have let the Israelites go and have lost their services. Oh dear. So he had his chariot made ready and took his army with him. He took 600 of the best chariots along with all the other chariots of Egypt, with officers all over them. Do you see? He took 600 of them. This is not a normal army pursuing him. This is like a huge army pursuing Moses. And I don't know about you, but when God calls you to something, do you sometimes feel that you're being persecuted? You're being chased. It's not easy. Some of us, we have this idea that, you know what? If God has called me to something, it should be straightforward. It should be easy. It sh- there should be a clear path. God, you know, we love to pray this prayer. If it's meant for me, open all the doors. But can I challenge you on one point that sometimes when God makes a a plan really clear to you, there might be challenges. And this is one of them, clearly. Someone is persecuted, running after them. It's not fun. And yet, Moses was very much a part of God's plan. So for those of you who are being chased, know this, that God is very mindful of your situation. Amen? Amen. The Lord hardened the heart of Pharaoh, king of Egypt, so that he pursued the Israelites who were marching up boldly, and the Egyptians, all of Pharaoh's horses and chariots, horsemen and troops, they pursued the Israelites and overtook them as they camped by the sea near Pihahiroth, opposite Baal Zephon. Next. And as the Pharaoh approached, the Israelites looked up. And oh, there were the Egyptians marching after them. They were relentless, right? And they were terrified and cried out to the Lord. They cried to Moses, was it because there were no graves in Egypt that you brought us here to the desert to die? What have you done to us by bringing us out of Egypt? Did we not say to you in Egypt, leave us alone? Let us serve the Egyptians. It would have been better for us to serve the Egyptians than to die in the desert. Friends, do you see what the Israelites are saying? They are actually telling Moses... It was better to have been a slave back in Egypt than to have this freedom now because we are now in the wilderness. And we read this passage and we always think, ha, these Israelites, they are so weak. Why do they want to be slaves? And when I think about myself in my situation right now, some of you who know our journey in missions, Cliff and I were in Uganda for a year, several years ago, and now we have two little girls, age six and three and a half, and we think to ourselves, God, when are you sending us next? And we feel a sense stirring in our hearts that this year could be the year God calls us into the field again as a family. And guess what? The first thing I think about is not, yeah, let's go! Let me tell you what my first thought is. My daughter is six and a half. She's supposed to start P1 next year. My first thought is, Which primary school? Hey, I'm from Taunan. She can go to Taunan. That's a really good school. But No! If God calls us to missions, where is she going to go? Right? And then this passage catches me. And I think to myself, I am that Israelite. I am the one saying, God, put me back in Egypt where I am. Because why? When they were in Egypt, they were slaves. But when we tell God, God, when you have a plan for me and I don't want to go, what are we telling God? We are enslaved to our comfort zones. Do you hear me? I am enslaved then to my children's education. I'm enslaved to the stewardship of my job, my career, my marriage. By saying, oh God, if you send me to a mission field, very jialat there, no? Later I cannot protect my marriage, no? 
cannot look after my family well. I cannot progress in my career. And one of my bosses told me, he said this, Waija, you're in such a good position right now. You're in the peak of your life. You have a good position at the university. You're doing humanitarian work. You have so much going ahead of you. And he said this, he's not a believer. Why don't you stay here, do short trips, be comfortable, but remember this, you can build an empire here for yourself. Wow. Friends, whose name are we here to build? Ours or God's? But when we are here and we say, God, keep me in my comfort zone, we are saying we'd rather be enslaved in Egypt because we are afraid of what's out there. We are afraid of this chasing, this persecution. We are afraid of going into the unknown and facing the Red Sea. Let's press on. But Moses answered the people. And this is why I love this passage. We always think, you know, Moses is the weak leader. But read this. He says, do not be afraid. Stand firm and you will see the deliverance the Lord will bring you today. The Egyptians you see today, you will never see again. The Lord will fight for you. You need only to be still. Friends, read this. The Lord will fight for you. You need only to be still. How many of us are struggling to get out of our situations? Struggling and striving to say, God, I need to get there where you have called me to. And we are striving and we are pushing. But the Lord is saying, be still. Then the Lord said to Moses, why are you crying out to me? Tell the Israelites to move on. Raise your staff and stretch out your hand over the sea to divide the water so that the Israelites can go through the sea on dry ground. Wow. Now this to me is an amazing passage. Even in those times when they saw amazing things from God, I think this was mind-blowing. Let's read on. I will harden the hearts of the Egyptians so that they will go in after them, and I will gain glory through Pharaoh and all his army, through his chariots and his horsemen. The Egyptians will know that I am the Lord when I gain glory through Pharaoh, his chariots, and his horsemen. Now, they have a very clear word from the Lord. I don't know about you, but I'm thinking to myself, if I'm in the, in the feet or in the shoes of Moses, the first thing I'm going to think is, oh, God, you better come through for me when I'm at that moment standing in the Red Sea. Because if the Red Sea doesn't part, what's going to happen? I don't know. And I think the question that we all ask ourselves is, God, will you part the Red Sea for me? And that is what holds us back. But I want you to imagine your life differently. What if every time God gave you an assignment, you knew, you knew and you knew and you knew in your spirit that God would certainly part the Red Sea for you? What if that happened? How would you make decisions differently? Can I share a story with you? Can I? Yeah, okay, great. I'm really excited. Okay, so last year, right, you know, Cliff and I, we tried to be young people again, and for the first time, we started using Instagram, okay? <laughs> we, were, we, were, we were Facebookers before, okay? And then suddenly we decided, and then we realized that, wow, God was opening a door for us to speak to young people, and people were writing in to us to ask about relationship questions, and we thought to ourselves, you know what, we're going to be good stewards. We want to answer these relationship questions over videos, and good videos. And we decided, you know what, we're going to do our research, we're going to prepare the questions, and we are going to um, record them and put out a series of relationship answers over Instagram. And we did it. We invested our own money. We did the research. We did everything. We even got babysitters to watch our kids so we could film the whole production. And guess what happened? A couple of weeks before the launch on our wedding anniversary, our 10th wedding anniversary, we realized that it wasn't going as we expected. And there was a very high chance that the project would fall flat and fall through. And I remember sitting at the window with Cliff, we held hands, and I started to cry and I said, God, what are we going to do now? Why did you ask us to embark on this? And now it's fallen through. It's like the detour. Why don't you give us a straight path from A to B? And guess what happened? I felt the Holy Spirit ask me, will you start again on a blank canvas? And I believe this is a question that God is asking some of you here today. You have gone on a detour. Are you ready to start on a blank canvas? And that evening as I cried and I teared, and I said, God, we've invested our time, our energy, our resources, our money. 
But yes, I will start again. Let me tell you what happened the next day. The next day I was due to meet um, an Instagram follower. I don't do this often. Actually, I've only done it once, and it was this lady. <laughs> She's a stay-at-home mom. She doesn't stay in Singapore. I know very little about her. We just happened to have a connection, you know? I decided to Zoom her, and because I was so heavy-hearted, I just shared all this with her. And guess what she said? She said this. She said, I know this is crazy. I know this is crazy, but I am a film producer. And she said this, my husband and I, we used to work in Hollywood. Now we've started our own Christian film company. And she said, we filmed relationship videos for Francis and Lisa Chen and Lisa and John Bavia. And she said, we're really invested in your story. We've been following you guys for a long time. Would you consider flying to San Francisco to meet us? And if you do that, we will sponsor the whole production of these relationship series for you. Wow. Friends, doesn't that blow your mind? And I think to myself, God, why did you lead me on that detour? Why? Wasn't that a waste of time? You remember? The Lord brought them through the Red Sea. Why? That's the long way. And I kept asking myself, why, why, why? And this is the reason why. Because we are so weak and frail. If the Lord had presented this opportunity without what had happened before, I am so sorry to tell you. I know you guys think that, oh, you know, whoever speaks up here has a good spiritual life, but you know what happened? If that request had come, if you want to, if you want to be sponsored, you fly here and we will do this for you. You know what I would have said? I'm so sorry. I can't take time out of my busy schedule. I'm so sorry. I don't want to deal with my kids' jet lag. Those of you have toddlers. It's crazy, isn't it? <laughs> right? That would have been my reason. But now, I'm laughing. Okay, you understand. But now, I have invested. I have put in the money. I have done this whole series that, fell fl that, that didn't go through. It is the long way, and I cannot turn back. And that is why the Lord knew that I would say yes. And because of that, um, we can show the next slide. These film producers decided to to put out the documentary series. And we've gone there, we've filmed, we've come back. Um, it will be screened later this year. But you can see the level of, of heart, professionalism. My husband's name is Tam, so that's why it's love untamable. <laughs> but you see, right, the level of professionalism. And I think to myself, God, why did you bring us on that detour? And now I see God's fingerprints all over it. And I want to encourage you, if you're taking the long road out, you're taking the long way out, God is aware. He is mindful. He knows your every step, my friends. You are not alone. Amen? Amen. Exodus 14, And then the angel of God, who had been travelling in front of Israel's army, withdrew and went behind him. And the pillar of cloud also moved from in front and stood behind them, coming between the armies of Egypt and Israel. And throughout the night, the cloud brought darkness to one side and light to the other side. So neither went near the other all night long. Isn't that amazing? God uses the circumstances around us to help us and to know His presence. And some of us keep asking this question, how do I hear God? How do I discern Him? It's very simple, my friends. When you have a relationship with Him, He will speak to you and He will show you. Even through little things, so-called silly things. Do you want to hear a silly story? Can I tell you why I'm wearing this outfit today? It's not something I would usually wear for preaching, okay? But I wore this because I want to share this with you. So when we started the whole calligraphy thing, right? I haven't shared with you how that started. But when, when that started and, and God sent to us this film company to do it, the first thing they said was, you need to wear an outfit. Okay, that's the, I mean, that's, that's the thing. And I said, okay, I, don't, I have a limited wardrobe, but you look. And they said, there's nothing here that is suitable. I'm like, really? And then those of you who know I have an aversion to shopping, I have very bad fashion sense, I was stuck. But then my friend, my teammate, she's amazing. She sends me this, this photo of this pink jumpsuit online. She says, Wajah, this is the piece. Go to the shop and go and try. So I go to the shop. I bring Cliff and the kids. I put it on and Cliff is like, wow. And he's like, this is the piece. I'm getting it for you. And I go inside to change, right? And I look at the price and I'm like, Ooh! 
And I'm like, no, 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 no. But I come out and he's paid for it. And I'm like, I want to scold him. But then the Holy Spirit speaks to me. And I feel this download. I feel this peace that comes upon me. You know what I mean? It's a peace, like a cloud. I know why this doesn't come often, but it was a peace that came over me. I went, mm. it was like an allergic reaction. Thank you so much for buying me the gift. I'm sure I'll make you good use of it. I'm like, after Chinese New Year, what am I going to do with this, right? So that's why last day, I'm still milking it, <laughs> right? Let me make the best out of it. So, I leave the place and I'm like, God, this is a hole in my pocket, right? But he's bought it. I can't return it. And I felt the Holy Spirit speak to me. I'm with you. The project will succeed. You need this. Trust me. And I go home the next day. We have an overseas guest visit us. And the overseas guest comes. And she gives me an ang pao. Like a red packet, right? And I take it from her. I say, thank you so much. You don't have to. But she says this. She says, I don't know what you like. So I decided not to bring a gift. I decided to give you a red packet. I hope you don't mind. I said, no, I don't mind. And then she's like, oh, but I, I don't know why. I just feel I want to give this to you so that you can buy anything you like to wear. I'm like, wow, that's very specific. I take it from what... It, the epiphany hasn't hit me yet. Huh? I haven't joined two and two together. I'm very slow. I take it from her and then I go to my room. I mean, she's just bringing the kids. Lah. I go to my room and I... I brought it for you. Oh, got pockets. And it's... It's the same colour as my jumpsuit. And I'm like, this is a very rare, rare colour for, for an ang pao, isn't it? I mean, even our cornerstone ang pao's are very um, untraditional, but they're not this colour. It's the six, 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 same colour, right? It's not just me, it's the same. And it has this word on it, it says man, which is fullness. And I felt the Lord tell me, out of the fullness of my love, out of the fullness of what I have, I give to you. There is no guilt. And friends, that was my pillar of cloud. That was my light in the night. To know that God was with me. And it was a little thing. It's a jumpsuit. Come on. There are more important things in life than jumpsuits, right? But this was important to me. And God knew it. And He knew that was what He wanted to be on screen. And friends, today I just declare that there are times and moments in your life that God is going to speak to you. He's going to tell you that I am here. I'm going to send the cloud. I'm going to send the light. And I'm going to guide you. And you're going to know my assurance that I'm with you. Amen? And if that's you, just say, I declare it. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Okay, let's move on, eh? <clears throat> then, Moses stretched out his hand over the sea, and all that night the Lord drove the sea back with a strong east wind whew, and turned it into dry land. Whoa. The waters were divided, and the Israelites went through the sea on dry ground with a wall of water whew, on their right and whew, on their left. And the Egyptians pursued them, and all Pharaoh's horses and chariots and horsemen followed them into the sea. They followed them. Huh. Next during the last watch of the night, the Lord looked down from the pillar of fire and cloud at the Egyptian army and threw it into confusion. He jammed the wheels of their chariots so that they had difficulty driving. Oh. And the Egyptians said, let's get away from the Israelites. The Lord is fighting for them against Egypt. And then the Lord said to Moses, stretch out your hand over the sea. Oh, friends, this is scary. You've seen the movies, right? You stretch out the staff and the water parts. <laughs> Now this is the scary, scary part. Stretch out your hand and <laughs> this is mass casualty. Can you imagine it? It's kind of scary. It's kind of gross, you know. It's scary, so that the waters may flow back over the Egyptians and their chariots and horsemen. And Moses stretched out his hand over the sea, and at daybreak the sea went back to its place. The Egyptians were fleeing. They were fleeing towards it, and the Lord swept them into the sea. The water flowed back and covered the chariots and the horsemen. And the entire army of Pharaoh that had followed the Israelites into the sea, not one of them survived. What happened to the enemy? Tietjela. 
by the Lord. It was all done. Amazing, isn't it? Moses, I was going to say Moses didn't lift a finger, but technically he did. He raised his hand. <laughs> right? But the Israelites went through the sea on dry ground with a wall of water on their right and on their left. And that day, the Lord saved Israel from the hands of the Egyptians. And Israel saw the Egyptians lying dead on the shore. And when the Israelites saw the mighty hand of the Lord displayed against the Egyptians, the people feared the Lord and they put their trust in him and in his Moses' servant. And in Moses' his servant. Now, friends, you see this amazing miracle that has happened. Would you be afraid if you were Moses? You had these people coming at you and you're standing at the Red Sea and like, huh, I don't know if this works. Ha! Right? I would be afraid. And I had that moment. You know, what happened was that we flew to San Francisco. We were actually in North America. And this, what happened was that a couple of months ago, while I was at this service, Isaac was preaching about faith. And the Lord hit me. I had an encounter with the Lord. And I'm like, usually I'm the one preaching about faith. But when I heard from someone my generation speaking faith back to me, it deposited something. I was a wreck that day at the altar call. And then I don't know why, is it because I'm the speaker here or why no one wants to pray for me? And then I'm weeping, you know. And I'm like, Hello. And there's this long lineup for Pastor Lip, no? And I'm there alone. And I'm like, Santa, hello. When Pastor Lip, very kind to me, I'm thinking, he's taking pity on me. He, he moves his body and then he comes to me and he's like, pray for me. And then he says this, he says, I don't say this lightly, but the Lord is telling me to tell you, test me and I'll show you my faithfulness. And the context of this was that I was crying and weeping because some of you know I run a non-profit ministry called Kite Song Global and we needed funds. For a long time, it was just, you know, out of our savings, out of the goodwill of people and now we have staff, we have real things to do. You know, we produce bookshops and resources to empower, inspire young people to go pursue their dreams to impact vulnerable communities. And then suddenly I realised it's a five, six-figure sum. I can't do it on my own anymore. And I started weeping and weeping. And Pastor Lip gives me this word, right? And then the following week, guess what happens? I'm at home doing my own thing. And then the Lord gives me this download about writing calligraphy again. And I'm like... I don't want to write calligraphy. I hate it. Those of you from Chinese schools, you know, huh? Always make you sit in the classroom, right? Well, I wrote it on Sunday mornings and it was very, very momentous for me because when I was a pre-believer, that's what I did with my Sunday mornings. So when I became a believer, I told myself, I want nothing to do with it. I hate it. I don't like Chinese New Year's. Very dysfunctional, very tension-filled. I don't like any of this. And then the Lord spoke to me and He said, no, you're in your mid-30s, if you erased everything you didn't like about your life, from the past, you don't have much of a life left. So he said, can you please stop erasing? Can you put it at my feet and let me redeem it and forge something new out of it? And as I'm speaking, I want to speak to some of you who are trying to bury your past. And let me tell you, within that baggage that you hate lies dreams that are buried. God wants to uncover those buried dreams and breathe life into them again. He wants to turn your ashes into beauty for His glory. Amen? Amen. And so what happened was that I did, I said, yes, Lord, I will do it, but I don't know how. And some of you look at the exhibition and think, oh, wow, it's, 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 it's up. Can I tell you something? Four weeks before the exhibition, I didn't know how it would look like. I was away. I was starting to get anxious. I was having palpitations before I went to sleep. Because you know the time zone difference, right? Then suddenly when it's time to sleep in Canada, I'm like, oh no, things are running in Singapore and things are not moving. Right? And I keep asking Cliff, I'm like, how am I going to afford this? I'm supposed to use this to raise funds and all, all the mentors I tell about this idea, they all tell me, you're crazy. They say, do you know that to organise an art exhibition, just the venue alone will kill you? How can you use it for fundraising? It's tens of thousands of dollars to book a venue. And then you have to do the setup and everything. It's not viable. But I said, the Lord gave me this download. What do you do? Right? Three weeks before the day, we couldn't find a vendor. Can you imagine? Now it's post-COVID. Everyone wants an event. Who wants to do our little Gucci Red event? At such late notice. So there was nothing. Two weeks before we went, before the, the, the launch day, we were still scrambling. Four days. Now I'm back in Singapore. Four days. 
before the exhibition, a major sponsor withdraws. And I realize I'm 25 thousand dollars short and this time I start to cry because I am desperate I say God I have done everything you have told me to I've gone out of my comfort zone I don't need to I could have stayed in Egypt now I've gone out of my way to do this crazy thing and now I'm $25,000 short. And back in the days, back in the days, I would have said, yeah, Lord, it's going to come from my savings account. And some of you will think, oh, well, she's a doctor, well, she can just pay it off from my savings, it's not a big deal. Well, just so we're on the same level, huh? I'm a public health administrator for a number of years. We, our family of four has one part-time single income. Okay, so... When I say we dip into our savings, I felt it. And then the worst part was that two weeks before that in Canada, I was preaching at a church. Guess what I preached on? The boy with the five loaves. And I told the congregation this, today I am challenging you. If you are that little boy, God wants your five loaves. All of it. And I'm there, I'm like, oh God, the five loaves feel so hard. <laughs> but it's your money, it hurts. And I'm thinking to myself, I am such an irresponsible mother. I am such a terrible wife. And then Cliff, right, he holds, Cliff is such a great husband. Give him a medal and a pat on the back after this, okay? He holds my hand, right? Oh, you want to applause now? It's okay, thank you. <laughs> he holds my hand. And then he looks at me. And he has this, we have this Korean drama moment together. And he's like, right, yeah, if nobody sponsors you, I will sponsor you. I'm like, oh, thank you, thank you, Lord, thank you, Lord. Then after I received in my heart, I told him, your sponsorship is my salary. La. <laughs> but it's the heart that counts, right? Or sin ling. And guess what? Two days after that, he drives me to see another, another sponsor. And I tell you, two days before the exhibition, my knees are shaking. I'm like, I'm $25,000 short, right? And I'm like, in the car. And suddenly I say, God, I need more faith in you. I need to trust you more. At that moment, this went past us. I kid you not. The, it was the Friends, it was the timing of it that made me know, God, this is you the timing. I literally said, I need more faith. And I said, Cliff, slow down the car. I need to take a photo. Follow it. Closer, closer. Okay, good reel. Got it. <clears throat> and then after that, we went to see the sponsor. And they we had a very long meeting. It was inconclusive in the end. They just said, you know, your exhibition is very good. Blah, blah, blah. But it doesn't, it doesn't fulfill some of our requirements. Okay, so we can't really sponsor these days. We don't do full sponsorship anymore. And I leave the meeting. I'm very, very self-controlled. <gasps> mm, thank you so much. I just came here to thank you for your time. And then I leave. And I find these steps, right, at the mall. And I sit there and I start to cry. Because I'm two days away and I'm $25,000 short. And I say, God, how many times do you want me to do this in ministry? Every single year, there is always one definitive moment I can remember. When I say, God, I cannot do this with my own savings anymore. I cannot do this from asking people. I really need you to intervene. And I'm sitting there crying, right? And then this uncle comes to me and he says, Hey, it's your mate, your mate, your and I'm like, no, 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 I'm okay. I'm not trying to commit suicide. I'm okay. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> and then so I pick myself up and I get a taxi home. I keep thinking about that cloud in that pillar. I kept thinking about this jumpsuit and I kept thinking, God, you have been here for me. You kept telling me you are over and abundant. Why am I in lack now? And how many more Red Seas do I have to go to? And I remember this word that Cliff gave to me when I was worrying. I was worrying my eyes out in Canada. And he kept saying this. He said, you know, this trip, it's so epic. It's so expensive. God sent people to give money to us, to help us. Do you not think he will help you? And he said when Moses had to part the Red Sea, right? You know, the moment where the staff went up? 
He said, before that moment happened, there's a long prelude, isn't it? Right? But at that moment, it needed to happen. It happened. And he kept telling me this, the Red Sea will part, but you have to wait for that timing for it to part. Amen. But friends, it's so hard to wait. It's so hard to trust. So that evening, I got an email from, from the same guys, and I'm like, I don't want to open it. I don't want to open it. And I open it. And I don't want to hear this long preamble about how you didn't meet our requirements, so we can only... <sighs> but I open it, and it says, we will fully sponsor $25,000 for our exhibition. Thank you, Jesus. Yes, you can clap. <laughs> And so, if you could show the next slide. The exhibition has been up for the past three to four weeks, and it's going to be up um, till the 5th of February. It's now in Clark Key, and, and this was the vision that God gave me. And for me to see it come to pass, it was just amazing because it was, it was real. It was real. It, it, it happened. And, and to see it, to see it like this, it blew my mind because the vision that God had given me was to have a Christian calligraphy art exhibition in a, se in a secular space to foster conversations about Christ in an event, in a festival where people would talk about family tensions and what garopot to eat and different things about Chinese New Year. Can we not center, recenter ourselves around Christ and what He has called us to? And friends, when I saw that the exhibition was called Meng Xiang, Cheng Zhen, I realized that we all have buried dreams in our hearts, that God wants to call to life and to breathe into fruition again. Next slide. <clears throat> by faith, they passed through the Red Sea as by dry land, whereas the Egyptians attempting to do so were drowned. In case you think, friends, that you can do so by risk, by foolhardiness, by, by, by this, I can do it, tomorrow I'm going to pack, go to Mongolia and do missions. No. It is by faith. The Egyptians, do you remember they went through? What happened? They were dead because they went in by presumption and gumption and not by faith. Friends, faith is the important element here. It is by faith that they went through the Red Sea and the Red Sea parted. Amen? Amen. I'm coming to a close. Next. Now, I want you to see this very clearly. In case you thought the Red Sea is all just for the past, but remember, the Red Sea, while well, it represented redemption from slavery in Egypt through Moses, what we have today is a redemption from slavery through Christ. And remember, what was an exodus from Egypt is actually freedom for us. So friends, if you are now in a season that you think that you are in exile, let me tell you this. It is not an exile. It is an intentional exodus. If you think, God, I am in a season of rejection, friends, it is not a season of rejection. It is a season of rescue from your slavery. Amen? Amen. Next slide. And this is biblical. Look at how our fathers who were baptized into Moses in the cloud and in the sea, that is the Old Testament, but in the New Testament, when we talk about being baptized into death, it is because we can walk in the newness of life. You see, friends, when you go to your old baggage and you leave it with Christ and you say, God, I'm willing to walk through whatever you give me and you, are go, you go through that Red Sea and the Red Sea parts where you come out a different person because your faith will never be the same again. Amen? Amen. I want to invite the worship team up and we're going to do a closing song before we do communion. Next slide. You will never walk down the Red Sea Road alone. Amen? Amen. Friends, today at the cusp of finishing off the Chinese New Year, I want all of us to come together and present ourselves to the Lord. You might have dreams that were buried. You might have hurts in your past. But I want to tell you that God is very mindful of you. If you are in a detour, if you are in a season of doubt, if you are in a season of exile and rejection, remember that God is well aware of what he's doing with the exodus and his rescue. Amen? Amen, amen, amen. We're not going to have an altar call today because we have communion, but I want us all to respond wherever we are. Would you stand with me? And as we sing this song, as we sing this song, I want you to just ask the Lord and say, God, 
What is it that you want me to walk? What is the Red Sea Road that you have for me? And I trust that you will part the waters when I get there. And friends, in case you thought this is just a victory story, I am still walking it myself. We, have, we are still very far away from the 200,000 we need to raise. We are still very far from the pieces that we need to sell and what we need to do. But this is the beauty of God, that He can do things again and again. And I declare today that if you have a Red Sea that you need to walk through, He can do it once. But God, of, who is the same yesterday, today and tomorrow, He can do it again and again. Amen? Amen. Let's sing together. <clears throat> There's a table that you prepare for me in the presence of my enemy. It's your body and your blood you shed for me, and this is how I fight my battle. Tell it to the Lord. Amen.
that, Lord, you would deposit right now a deposition and measure of greater faith and trust that, Lord, even as we raise our right hands together right now, that we declare, Lord, you are faithful. Would you all raise your hands now and say, yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, Lord, by faith. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen, amen, amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Pastor Kevin. Thank you for watching. My hope is that every message on Kite Dreams will inspire you to dream bravely and live boldly for God. If you've been blessed by these messages, feel free to share them with your friends, subscribe, and I'd love to hear from you. May God grant you the courage and faith to pursue all that He has in store for you. Be blessed.